morning reservations. Could you hold, please? Is the chef there? No, he's not. Could you hold, please? Is Jean-Claude there? No, he's not. Could you hold, please? Is Bob there? No, he's not. Could you hold on for one second? Yes. Uh, good morning reservations. Could you hold, please? No, I'm calling from Kuwait. Uh, all right. How can I help you? I am calling to confirm dinner reservations for Sheikh Ahmad al Tarafi tonight at 9.30. Uh, all right. I have uh, four at table 31. And two security guards at 19. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Good morning, reservations. Could you hold, please? Sure. Good morning, reservations. Could you hold, please? Sure. Good morning, reservations. Could you hold, please? Sure. Good morning, reservations. Could you hold, please? Well, I don't have a choice now, do I? Good morning, reservations. Could you hold, please? My name is Watson Could you hold, please? W as in Wisconsin. One moment, please. Bob. Hello, stairs. Sonia. Morning, Sam. Uh, hey, Stephanie, have you seen Bob? No, but when he comes in, will you let him know that there's a photographer from Gourmet magazine who's been waiting for the chef since 8.30? Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good morning, reservations. Could you hold, please? No, I tried that before. Who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Sam. Sam, darling, I didn't know you were still working there. It's Bonnie Vanderveer. My husband is Dick Vanderveer. Ah, hi, how are you? Oh, well, we're exhausted. We've just come back from Tibet. Now, look, I know it's last minute, but Mr. Vanderveer and I would like to come in tonight with our good friend Philip Johnson, and we can be very flexible. Anywhere between, say, 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Wow, Spencer McLaren in action, fully committed here at the Athenaeum. I'm, I'm tired just watching that. <laughs> <laughs> you should try the whole show, you know, that's... that's no, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> how's, it, how's it going so far? You're about a week in, yeah? Yeah, we've had our first week, we've got our three more weeks to go, mm-hmm. and the response has been nothing but great. I mean, the reviews, I, I don't think I would have written them that well if I'd written them myself. <laughs> so you, you haven't been bruising palms and... No, fortunately, fortunately press. not, no. no. So, um, it's all been free. <laughs> oh, fantastic. We like free stuff. We do. <laughs> so what, what was the genesis of this project for you? Uh, basically, I started the year, I just thought, okay, what's coming up? You know, looking at what's in production, those kind of things. And thought, well, there's not a huge amount available to me in the second half of the year, and I really want to do something. So mm-hmm. I thought I'd seen this show about four years ago in London and really loved it right. and wanted to do it at some point. I thought, well, I'll just... Uh, put a package together, see if we can get it up, and um, the response is really good, so I got some sponsorship really quickly, and um, yeah, so I thought, right, let's go for it. So is it one of the most diverse parts you've done in terms of a single show? Uh, I think yes, <laughs> considering <laughs> I play 40 people. Yeah. It doesn't get much more diverse than that. Um, men, women, old, young, you know, gay, straight, Jewish, Indian, English, you know. <laughs> English? Oh, come on. I <laughs> know. Oh, it's, it's so rare you see a Brit. Yes. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's definitely one of the most diverse things I've ever done and one of the biggest challenges, I think. Yeah, so do you ever feel like you should be committed after a day here, uh, after all you these? Know, absolutely, yeah. you know, and especially getting to opening night because I'm producing as well. Ah. Um, it's, oh, <laughs> I can't tell you. You know, I had my lunch break and I'm on the phone going, ah. And I thought, <laughs> this is, who, who did this? Who said to do this? So were any of the accents a problem or did they all come pretty? Because I've seen people talk, write about your accents and how well they've come out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think there were certain characters that it, it went through like two or three different accents oh, to I start see. with. That one doesn't feel quite right. Think, oh, it's too, it's too hard, or it's not. Oh, it doesn't sound female enough. There's all sorts of things that, that went. So you go, oh, back to the drawing board with that one, right? And have a think about them. But um, no, I, none of them were a big problem. I went up and saw my. Uh, uh, vocal and dialect coach up at NIDA in Sydney as well, Bill mm-hmm. Pepper, and he gave me some extra tapes and things on some of them, like the New York Puerto Rican. I, kind of oh, well, I don't know any of those, so I thought I'll have to go and find niche, that. Yeah, yeah I say, which is the, there's a full community called the New Yorkan community that you just kind of go, what? Mm. And they have their own special accent and dialect and all that, So, and he had tapes. Blimey. You know, that's, that's his job. He's well, it is his all job, of them. Yeah. So, his sense of library. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's great to have a resource like that. And, Oh, for sure, yeah. Do, I mean, I suppose none of the characters are really on stage long enough to, you know, go into any depth, are they, too? Um, you, have, you have the main character, Sam, who's, you know, the person we all identify with in a sense. Mm. Yeah, that poor guy, you know. So he's there all the time. And then you have probably three or four, or maybe five or six of them, but that recur constantly 
throughout it. Like you've got Carol Ann Wilson's name, Fishbone, mm-hmm. the, the Jewish kind of fishwife almost, really. <laughs> but she's um, you know, the helmet head socialite, as they describe her. You've got the chef who's on the phone every two minutes. That's his special little red yep, phone yep, over yep. there that gets a lot of slamming. As we just saw you um, pasting it back together for all yeah, yeah. <laughs> From all the slamming. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you do have a, a probably five or six you really get to know quite well. So, I mean, have you made a conscious decision to make it different to what you saw in London? Um, well, the only thing I could remember about London is that I was just awestruck at, mm. at this whirlwind that happened. Um, so in, in having to make choices to be different, I, I didn't feel like I needed to because there was so much going on, I didn't really latch onto any of his performance in any way except for the fact I was just astonished. Yeah. And, and the, one, the one thing that I did uh, get from seeing him was that it takes less than you think to create a, a character, to mm-hmm. differentiate. You don't have to be huge. You can just do you know, a slight physicality and, and, and the accent and things like that, and that's enough. You know? and so as long as you change them, whether it's just a hand gesture that one of them always has, or it's enough to remind people you don't have to do as much as you would imagine. Who, uh, who did it in London? It's a guy called Mark Setlock who did it in New York originally. Oh, I see. And it was written with him developing some of the characters along the way, so it was his experience. Okay. Um, and by Becky Mode, who wrote a lot of stuff for Cosby Show as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, fabulous. Good vintage you know. then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, television's really where we've got to know you, but you started out in theatre. And I, yeah. you've done a hell of a lot. You've done a lot of the biggies, haven't you? Carousel, yeah, I mean, I did stuff. a lot of big musicals, yeah, like West Side Story, Carousel, um, Beauty and the Beast, mm. Cats, um, and uh, a few plays. I did like 12 Angry Men at one point um, up in Sydney. Over in London, I did a, a new play called The Vegemite Tales, which is an Australian mm-hmm. set in London share house kind oh, of experience no, number. That never happens. Come on. That <laughs> never happens, exactly. Um, yeah, and of course, the, the television stuff. So it's nice to come back to a, a play. Do you think we're getting enough Australian stuff on stage? No. Or, no. <laughs> no. Or on screen? No, no argument. Is there still a cultural cringe around our, our art? Uh, I've always. I yeah. think it's, it's, it's definitely there. Um, Less it's getting better with film now, mm. I think because so many of our actors are also in big American films. It's like when they come back, everyone goes, oh, they've made it. You know, it's like, it must be a good film, we'll watch yeah, it. You know? yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, if you ask people what they know and who they know, I mean, you even just look at the fact that all those celebrity magazines are full of American and international celebrities. Mm. And we have enough you know, people who bad, have bad behaviour here to <laughs> fill those magazines as well. Too many? So you yes. know, people go, oh, no, I want, I want Hollywood, I want that, and it's this... It's not the real McCoy, is it, unless it's... Yeah, unless it's American. Yeah. You know, that's stupid. Exactly. So. But the Brits are the same, so... Yeah, oh, us. yeah, no, it's not just us. But we, we have the problem is we have the English and the American mm. bombarding us. Exactly. Whereas they just have Americans. So they end up with, like, a much stronger balance of their own product yeah. up there. Because it's kind of, you know, probably two-thirds British and one-third American over there. Whereas here, you'd be lucky to even say it's a third Australian. I know. It's you know? Ter- yeah, it's terrible.